Christ's name. We're grateful for our families, for our church, for our country. We're thankful for the measure of health that you have given to us, and we praise your name for the fact that when we leave this world, we'll stand in your presence and be able to praise you forever. And I ask you to bless those with whom prayer has been mentioned tonight. I pray, Father, that you would be what they need, and may we be wise enough to recognize it and give you glory. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, for 25, yes. All right, pray for Sister Charlotte, like a, a migraine kind of a thing. Mm. All right. Wow. For 25 noisy, tense, chapters we've heard job and his friends trade insults lob sarcasm at one another across the net they have defended their own brand of wisdom and knowledge and theology and philosophy and job has come to a disturbing intersection with his worldview and it it has bothered him uh he has come to understand that it's not always the ungodly that suffer. Um, he has experienced unparalleled suffering for which there is no plausible explanation. There's just, there's no explanation for it. And so his friends, however, have offered an explanation. Oh, Job, this is not mysterious at all. Um, and the ungodly always suffer. And so if you are suffering, you are ungodly. And the righteous are always blessed, so if you are blessed, you are righteous. That's pretty simple. That's a real cut and dry worldview. But here's the problem. It don't work that way. Uh, life is, is not cut like that. And so Job's circumstances are clearly definable within the parameters of that worldview. And so these guys just have, have not let up. I mean, it's just been 25 chapters of, yes, you are. You are unrepentant. This is not mysterious, Job. Come on, man. You're acting like you don't know what's going on. You know what's going on. Come on, tell us. You can tell us. And then since he didn't tell them, they made up some stuff. Well, you haven't fed the hungry, and you have stolen, you know. You all remember that chapter. You're not going to say it. We'll say it for you. And, um, and so, so far, we have sailed through a literary storm. Every chapter has been a thunderstorm. Lightning popping everywhere, uh, thunder booming all over the place. And chapter 28 now, it's as though the boat, the ship of Job has Jesus on board. And Jesus steps up on the deck and he just, hey, 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 stop it. And the wind just settles right down. Chapter 28 is the most unique chapter in the whole book. It's going to deal with wisdom. And he's going to, he's going to take us on a tour. It's going to be kind of an interesting thing, uh, what he's, he's going to do. And, but peppered through uh, the pages of the book of Job is this existential question, why? I don't understand this. And his buddies don't either. They're just making stuff up to look smart. Well, it's because of this. No, it's not. And Job, godly man. He didn't understand why. Why is this happening? And so what we're going to do, we are going to look at three pretty profound movements in chapter 28. This is going to be an interesting chapter. And uh, the, the first section is the first 11 verses. of, And you will see, when I tell you that there are three segments or three moves, you, you're going to be able to feel it. If you've ever cut meat, you know, you can feel where the seams and the muscles are. You're going to be able to feel the seams, and I'll point this out to you. When we get to verse 12, it, it changes gear. And so this first movement in these first 11 chapters is a costly search for a costly object. We're looking for something very, very valuable. It costs a lot to look for, just to look for. You're not guaranteed you'll find what they're looking for. But it costs a lot. The equipment costs a lot. The time costs a lot. Anyway, let's see what we're doing here. All right, look at verse number one. Surely, and the word surely means it is true. 
So let's read it that way. It is true there is a vein for the silver. And the word vein is translated mine, M-I-N-E. Back in these days, uh, we have records of mining operations in 1200 B.C. Job was aware of men going down into the earth and mining for gold and silver and diamonds and stuff like that. And so it is true there is a mine for the silver and a place for gold where they find it. And find it just simply means to smelt. And so these men knew. They had intelligence. They had the equipment. They had the gear. Get down inside these mines. Dig the ore. Bring the ore to the surface. Uh, put it in these slag piles. Uh, get, get the dirt and the gold and, and get it out. Sell it. Make money with it. And, and have a lifestyle. And so they, they knew what they were doing here. And uh, so verse number 2 Iron is taken out of the earth. Iron. They were smelting iron at this period of history. That's pretty, that's pretty amazing, you know. There were, there were no Neanderthals, you know. These, uh, these cave people that were stupid and, you know, there was none of that. These guys pretty much on the ball. And brass is molten out of the stone. He setteth an end to darkness. And we're talking about the miner now. And the way the miner would put an end to darkness was to carry a lamp. And these guys, there was a, there'd be a hole or a cave. And they would lower the miners down with a rope. They would tie a loop in the rope. And the guy would put his foot in it or his feet in it. And they would lower him down. And he'd have a, either a torch or a lamp. And as he went down, it'd, it'd light up the wall and he would holler at them and tell them to stop here. And then he would, he would dig and uh, excavate that area. So they didn't have the equipment that we have today. But they had, they had the technology of the day. And they're digging for this ore and all of this stuff. And so that's what Job is explaining. And here's, here's where he's going to take us. Um, this stuff men will kill themselves to find. They'll go to great lengths. They will dig back underneath. They will get in these caves. They'll go down in these shafts. They will, uh, man, they will risk their lives to come out with the gold and the silver and the brass. And, and, uh, but we're not looking for wisdom. So they'll look for that, but they won't look for this. Is there pretty much a parallel today? You know, people look for that, they won't look for this. You know, they're, they're, they're digging in the shaft for money and success and all these things. But wisdom, eh, it's really not a big deal. Verse number three, he setteth an end to darkness and searcheth out all perfection. He's looking everywhere. All right, he, he's got his feet in a rope. He's hanging in front of this wall. And don't you think he is looking for every fleck of gold he can find or silver? And so he's searching out to perfection the stones of darkness. So these, the diamonds and the rubies and the sapphires, they're there. You've got to look for them. They're in the dark. So you've got to bring your lamp and look and the shadow of death. So this was, uh, uh, anybody ever been underground? Really, really deep underground? I don't like that. Uh, anybody have claustrophobia beside me? You got it? Oh, okay. Yeah, I think Keith Davis was telling me one time they were in China, and they went down, was it two miles or something like that? And he said he'd never been in dark. That he, they were proud of their dark over there. It's a it's a it's a high grade of dark where they were going. It, yeah, in. pyramid yes sir right now what he's doing he's explaining the mining process verse 4 the flood breaketh out from the inhabitant in other words every now and then when you're when you're digging and opening up a new shaft you'd hit a little spring of water and the water would pour out of the wall and so the, the flood would break out even the waters forgotten of the foot in other words, they're not walking in this water because they're suspended above it, all right? They're, they're hanging in these, in these ropes, 
They are dried up. Yeah, they are. <laughs> They're not walking in it. They are gone away from men. In other words, these, these mine shafts, they didn't do this downtown. This was way, way out in the, in the areas where people didn't, you usually didn't go to the mines. You know, that was way, way out there. Even the animals couldn't find these places. And we'll find that out here in just, just a minute. All right, now, we've been underground. We're, we're digging, we're mining, we're scratching, we're doing all that kind of stuff. Now, as for the earth, let's come back up to the surface for just a minute. Out of it cometh bread. So people look for hmm, wheat and corn, and they, uh, they, they plant the ground. We eat vegetables all the time. We're going to have some vegetables tonight that came out of the ground. And uh, so out of it comes bread, and under it, it is turned up as it were fire. Now we're back down in the mine. And if there was a big rock down there that they wanted to see if it had gold or silver in it, what they would do, they would heat it up with fire and it would crack. And so when it would crack, then they'd look to see if it had any uh, commercial grade ore in it. And uh, so verse number six, the stones of it are places of sapphires and hath the dust of gold so these guys are looking 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 man um, what would how, how deep would you go to find wisdom how deep would you what if you knew in a in a mine shaft on your property this is yours now and and you discover this mine shaft and you have been told that there are diamonds in that mine shaft. All you got to do is make your way down there, and it's it's about two miles back to the back of it. Would you do it? Without much hesitation, right there. What if it's an old creaky mine shaft, and you know you hear the timbers creaking, and as you're walking along, you know you you see the dirt falling down from the ceiling and, and you hear water dripping and it's kind of echoing back in the back would you still go is it worth it Jared eat hard you know the point is this <laughs> um, we'll do just about anything for prosperity we will we'll risk our lives. We will ri look at what we will risk to be wealthy and to and to get ahead financially. But look how insignificant wisdom is to us. You know, if we search for wisdom, and this is what Job is doing. This is ultimately where he's going to go. He's looking everywhere for it. And uh, but if we looked for wisdom the way we look for wealth. We'd truly be wise people. True. Usually, usually the poor are the ones that are in love with money. That's exactly right. Good point. All right, now, let's look at verse number 7. Now, we're the location of the mine now, okay? That's, keep this in mind. There is a path which no fowl, and that word fowl is our word raptor, it's a bird. There's a bird, they, they don't know how to get down in there. Matter of fact, if they got down in there, does a, is a bird interested in gold and silver and sapphires? No, not at all. Yeah. There's a path which no fowl knoweth, and which the vulture's eye hath not seen. And the vulture is uh, the word falcon, or the, the bird falcon. And so there are no falcons down there. They got pretty sharp eyes. There are no falcons using their sharp eyes looking for gold. That's what we do. That's what man does. He's got his flashlights and he's got his torches and he's got his shovel and he's got his ropes and his buckets and all that stuff. Now, the lion's whelps have not trodden it nor the fierce lion passed by it. Animals have no interest. 
in the things that we're passionate about in the area of, of prosperity and gold and silver and money and stuff like that. Verse number 9. Now we're back to the miner. He putteth forth his hand upon the rock. He overturneth the mountains by the roots. In other words, he's inside the mountain and he's excavating. He's, he's just turning things upside down, flipping rocks over, turning this over, digging a hole there. This guy is serious about what he's doing. He is risking his life. I wouldn't be a miner. These folks that work in these coal mines in Virginia, I wouldn't do that. They go down in those mines two or three miles and, oh, my word. Um, but you know, they're looking for something very valuable. Verse number 10, he cutteth out rivers among the rocks. And the word rivers is shaft. So, he, you know, I, th I think we need to go this way. And so they, they'll just start digging a, a tunnel. So they're digging the tunnel that way. So they're digging uh, rivers among the rocks. His eye seeth every precious thing. This is a well-trained miner. And he's checking it out. Boy, if it shines, if it sparkles, he's, he's checking this thing out. Verse number 11. He bindeth the floods from overflowing. If there's a... If there's a little stream that is interfering with his mining procedure, he'll dam it up. He'll stop it so they can keep digging in this area. And so he binds the floods from overflowing. And the thing that is hid bringeth he forth to light. And that is a reference to these um, tailing piles. Uh, Paul, do they call that stuff slag? Is that what, what, what do they call the stuff that they bring out of the mine and just dump it in these big mountains? Uh, maybe slag is not the right word. Yeah. Pilings or tailings or tailings? Oh, okay, okay. Okay, well, that, that's a reference to the piles of dirt that they bring out by the buckets. And, you know, they, they got to go through it and get the good stuff out of it. And so he brings that to light. They're bringing it out of the hole, bringing it out of the shaft up to the surface. Now, verse 12, we're, we're done with that. And you'll be able to feel a little seam in the muscle here. But where shall wisdom be found? The whole purpose of these first 11 verses is, now we know where gold is. It's hard to find. It's difficult. It's dangerous. It's dark. It's mysterious. It's all of these things. And he's kind of given us a little picture of how they did it. Now, where is the vein that has wisdom in it? Where's the shaft that has understanding and discretion? Where is that? Where shall wisdom be found? And where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price. The word price there is translated way. And so man knoweth not the way thereof, neither is it found in the land of the living. Where, where? We know, we know where to find gold, but we don't know where to find wisdom. You know, people know where to find money. In our culture here in the United States, uh, don't we? We know how to find money. We know how to find prosperity. We know how to do it. But where do you find wisdom? You know, I think there's money everywhere, personally. There's money in air. I mean, compressed air, you know, is, is sold. Uh, there's money in water. Could, would you have believed 50 years ago that you'd be buying a bottle of water? Buying water? Are you kidding me? Water is everywhere? Yeah, there's money's everywhere. And it, it takes some ingenuity. It takes some creativity. Uh, but it's, it's everywhere. And so uh, verse number 13, though, said, but, you know, we know we know how to find money, but we don't know how to find wisdom. So, let's go on a journey. Let's, let's. There's the only way to, there's only one way to get it. And he finally figured that out. All right. So, uh, verse 14. The depth, and the depth is subterranean water. Uh, this is water underneath the earth. The depth 
says, not here. I, I don't know where it is. Then he says, the sea saith. Uh, that's the oceans on the surface of the earth. That's not me. Y'all, have y'all, y'all seen it? I don't know where it is. I don't know where the, I know where the water is. Hey, I can tell you where some gold is. No, I'm not interested in gold. How about some silver? Not interested in silver. I'm looking for wisdom. But I, I don't, I'm sorry, I can't help you there. I don't know where it is. Verse uh, 15. It cannot be gotten for gold. Neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. So, uh, when you do find it, if you do, how are you going to purchase it? Are you going to buy it? Are you going to order it online? Are you going to buy a book that's the source of wisdom? How are you going to get it if you can ever find it? And so far, we are, this is a futile trip. He is coming up empty. Now, he's coming up with his hands dirty, and they've got gold and silver, and he's got diamonds and sapphires and all this other stuff. That's not what he's looking for now. He's, he just used that as an illustration of the extent that we go to. And he's, he told us a little bit about the know-how, but we're, now we're not interested in the know-how. We're interested in the know-why. Why? Job wants to know. He understands that the earth has structure. He understands that there's design, and there's an architect to the world. He understands that there's a physical building known as the universe but he's also aware that there's a moral architecture as well he knows not only is there their substance and, and material and not only is there uh, reality in the physical world he's also aware there's reality in the moral world that's he's looking for that and where did all this where did it come from where did the wisdom come from that has structured the universe where, I don't understand it. I, I, he said, I, I asked the subterranean world, is it hidden down here? Nope. How about in the oceans? No, nope, it's not here either. Well, it's got to be somewhere because look at this place. Look at how ordered and structured. I want to know. But what he's really looking for is the answer to his question. Why? Why did this happen to me? There's a reason, and I'm not going to stop till I find it. And so we're looking now in verse, uh, look at 16. It, wisdom, cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx or the sapphire. Now it's, it's okay. I think it's good to have um, money. I have no problem with wealth. I really don't. If somebody can make $50 million a year, if they do it ethically and moral, I, I just, God bless you. Just tithe off of it. You know, it's the only thing I would encourage you to do. Um, but there, there's something more valuable than that. And this is the thing that the world's not looking for. I heard a report today. I was sharing with a couple of folks before service. Uh, the governor of Virginia is going to pursue some legislation in his state. Uh, it's called the, the repeal law. And here's what it is. And I, I heard his voice on, on the radio. This was not just a quote, but I heard him say, if a woman has a baby and the baby is birthed, we will give comfort to that child and the doctors will talk to the mother to see what she wants to do with that baby. If that mother does not want that child, this is, this is beyond abortion, folks. This is not abortion. This is infanticide. Okay? And in, this is probably going to happen in the state of Virginia. It has nearly happened in the state of New York. Now, we have technology that is absolutely mind-blowing. Look at our phones and our iPads and our devices. Look at our automobiles that will talk to you. Yeah, drive themselves and park themselves. Look at our technology. But we're murdering 
children. Mm -hmm. Exactly. And you know as well as I do, and this is a little bit of a left turn here. Um, if a child is born and they made an announcement, we have a little baby girl, free. The mother does not want the child. You know as well as I do, there'd be a line a mile long in front of that hospital. Families wanting children like that. But no, that is that is not going to be an option. Yeah, yeah, it is. You're talking about thousands of dollars. But all of that could be solved, but we're, we're not going to do that. And uh, <laughs> well, um, folks, there's spiritual truth embedded in the physical world. All right? We're not just really clever animals. The world did not just accidentally, randomly appear. There's order here. There's not only order, there's purpose, there's precision. It's, it, the, the earth has systems. There's a weather system. Uh, we have all kinds of systems that work in harmony and in concert with one another to produce a livable atmosphere. And so... Not only is there this physical, if there is physical order and precision, there must be moral order and precision. And beyond that, if there is moral order, there must be a moral order giver. Somebody had to say initially, this is right and this is wrong. Somebody had to do that. Well, who did that? Was it Hammurabi? No. Was it uh, Nebuchadnezzar? No. Do what? <laughs> God set the universe. He created the universe. There are physical laws that govern the physical universe. And we'd better be glad that the laws of the universe are not as squirrely as the moral laws that we are writing. There's no telling where the sun would come up. There's, there's, just, there's no telling how far the tides would come in. If we were in charge of it, but we're not. Thank God for that. All right, so uh, look at uh, verse number 17 now. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. Now, there's a... There's a verbal sandwich here that uh, we're going to look at in verses 12 through 22. And here's, here's the first. It's kind of sad, really. Job is a little lamb that has been just devastated. And he wants to know why. He's hurt. He's wounded. He's bruised. He loves God. And it appears as though God has just kicked him to the curb and he says, Lord, I still love you. Can you tell me why? I just, I want, I want to know why this has happened. And so he's on this search looking for wisdom. And his, his understanding, if I, can, if I can find the wisdom of the universe, I'll have the answer to my question. Matter of fact, not only will I have the answer to my question, I'll have the answer to the question of suffering for the whole world. I will understand the basic governing principles that keep everything in harmony that's what he's looking for just like these guys go down in the mines and dig and plot around and, and look for that kind of stuff and so uh, more than arguments and philosophies and debates and charges and counter charges this guy wants an answer to his existential question why did this happen all right now so that's the first 11 verses now let's the, the second muscle group is in verses 12 through 22 now we're this is going to be a useless search for a priceless object we're going to come up empty-handed um, and, and so far we've heard him say 
that gold and silver and diamonds are very expensive, they're valuable, they're highly prized, but they're out of reach. They're out of reach. I mean, look where they are, for goodness sake. How many of y'all going to go down there and do that? You're going to risk your life for a diamond or for gold. Um, and so it doesn't just lay down. On, it's not on the surface. It, it's not just floating in the water, you know. This, this is a really difficult search here. And so now we kind of enter the part of this narrative. It's kind of discouraging. It really is. Because you're going to get the idea, we'll never find wisdom. It's, I, I may find a diamond. But I'll never find wisdom. And um, so the, the parallel thoughts are the inaccessibility. We will never know the bottom line on anything. But now we'll have gold in the bank, but we won't have wisdom. Mm -hmm. For the teachable. And it's you will never learn everything by experience. You don't, you're not going to live long enough to learn everything by experience. So you need to listen to somebody. Yeah, yeah, you, you run out of time. So verses, look at verses 12 and 14, and here's what he's going to tell us. Wisdom can't be found. You can't find it. All right, look at verse 12. Uh, where will wisdom be found? Where is the place of understanding? Man knoweth not the price or the way thereof. Neither is it found in the land of the living. If the depth or the depth saith, it's not in me, and the sea saith, it's not with me. I don't know. I don't know what you're talking about, buddy. And so here's Job's first uh, response. It, you, it's, where is it? It can't be found. It's, it's nowhere. I don't, I don't know where we're going to go. Now, verses 15 through 19 tell us this. Wisdom is so valuable, we got to find it. we got to find it. Look at 15. It cannot be gotten for gold, neither shall silver be weighed for the price thereof. It cannot be valued with the gold of Ophir, with the precious onyx, or with the sapphire. The gold and the crystal cannot equal it, and the exchange of it shall not be for jewels of fine gold. No mention shall be made of coral or pearls. And the word pearls is the Hebrew word, what is frozen. And so we're looking at... Uh, Probably a diamond, because it looks like frozen water. Anyway, uh, for the price of wisdom is above rubies. That sound like some proverbs? You know, the price of wisdom is far above rubies. The topaz of Ethiopia shall not equal it, neither shall it be valued with pure gold. So, this is pretty valuable. Now, if if whatever you're looking for was more valuable than all this, we just keep looking. I mean, it's, it's more valuable than, than any, any number of diamonds or any amount of gold. I understand that George Soros owns 11 tons of gold. 11 tons of gold. Would you work hard for 11 tons of gold? I mean, ethical work, not doing anything. Would you, would you work overtime for 11 tons of gold? And so Job is saying, look, we can't find it. And in the next few verses, he said, but we got to. It's, we can't stop looking, guys. Look at, what it's, look at what it's more valuable than. And then he just gives us this, this shopping list of stuff. All right, now, verse number 20. Uh, Job is he's just he's dying to know how the world works. I love Job. For, for his tenacity. He's not going to let go. And you ever met anybody like that that just would not let go? Well, in, in this instance, this is our buddy. And not only... Yeah. There, there, are, there are some people in the world and and they're probably your mentors you know folks that you maybe your parents that gave you the work ethic you have and and uh so on but and, and job was like i'm not gonna quit looking i'm not gonna quit lord i don't care where you are i'm gonna find you 
You can hide with it. I don't care where you hide it. I am going to find it. And so it's just it's too valuable not to. And so he, he's, he's got to know. At the, now, at the root of this whole question is how does this universe work? Are the blessed, do, I, do they always live a long life? The wicked, do they always get kicked in the chops? And does, does it always go south? For the, is, how, Lord, how do you work this thing? Where are the knobs? Where are the, where's the dashboard? Where's the gas and the clutch and the brake? Where's the volume on the red? Where, I want to see, I want to go inside and see the cockpit on how all of this works. Not only physically, but morally. And where is that? I, and, and he's looking all over the place for it and can't find it so far. And so, you know, it's good to enjoy the things that money can buy if you don't lose sight of the things money can't buy. Nothing wrong with having stuff. And I just, um, don't let anybody make you feel bad. If you live in a nice house and you work for it, God bless you. God bless you. You, you drive a nice car and you work for it, God bless you. Uh, people get jealous. I'm not, Christians can get jealous over stuff like that. And so, now, verse number, uh, where are we? 20. Whence then cometh wisdom? Where is the place of understanding? And he, he's asking this question repeatedly here, uh, and he's just not going to give up. So let's get down now to verse number 21. Seeing it's hid from the eyes of all living and kept close from the fowls of the air, nobody knows the source of the universe. Do you all know how the universe works, by the way? You know, the scripture says that, that God founded the world by wisdom. There's the wisdom of the laws of physics. You know God wrote the law of gravity? He wrote it. How, how, how does gravity work? Uh, the laws of thermodynamics. He, uh, air pressure. You know pressure has weight? Or, or air has weight to it? Water? You ever notice when you, you go deeper, if you, if you swam in deep water, it, you just, I remember uh, I was deep sea fishing a long time ago, and we were fishing in uh, it was two or three hundred feet of water, and some guy put a, a styrofoam ball, tied a styrofoam ball to his line, and dropped it, and it went down to the bottom. And he said, "Y'all watch this." And he reeled it up. Took him a while to get it up, and that styrofoam ball was just about that bigger. And I was like, "Oh, that's you know." And I started looking for styrofoam balls, but uh, water has how much does water weigh? And and all of these things, God set the weight, the pressure. The distance, the distance from the sun to the earth is perfect. The amount of nitrogen and oxygen in our breathable atmosphere is perfect. We can't breathe on the moon. There's a different atmosphere there. But God knew how to set the dials so we could breathe it. That's true. But Job, Job has this question. I want to know. Why? If I, can, if I can find out all this other stuff, in that, I, oh, there's my answer. This is why this happened. All right? So, uh, we, and by the way, we've always wanted to know what we don't know. There's a, the tree of knowledge of good and evil. Satan, Satan baited us with, you want to know more? Yeah. You want the secret of wisdom? Yeah. You want to be more like God? Absolutely. So we, we were looking for it there. You remember in Genesis chapter 11, they built the Tower of Babel. They wanted, they wanted the wisdom of the heavens. They wanted to know. There's just, man has this curiosity. Now, animals don't. They're satisfied with their instinct. They, you know, I don't, there are no animals in school. Well, I, yeah, Piro and Joanna did send their dog. And a lot of people send their dog to obedience school, but, uh, you know, they'll have homework and, and, and all that kind of stuff, you know what I'm talking about. Um, and so we've hand-carved our own theological framework because we want to know who is God, what is God, what does he require of us. And so this, but this search, according to Job, so far is doomed to failure, and he keeps on. Look at verse number 22 now. 
destruction. Now we're going to go into the world of mysterious spiritual places. And we're going to meet a fellow by the name of Abaddon. And Abaddon is the keeper of the gates of hell, according to the book of Revelation. That very name is used, Abaddon. And so destruction is translated Abaddon. And so we're going to go down now into the bowels of the, the dead. Abaddon and death, and death is the grave, say, you know, we've heard about that. But I can't tell you anything about it. Yeah, isn't that amazing? There's no wisdom in death. There's no wisdom in hell. And so it's like, you know, the gatekeeper of hell, Job walks up and says, hey, man, uh, I'm looking for wisdom. And, and the gatekeeper says, uh, I heard about that. I heard some folks talking about it, but I have no clue what it is. Well, you're right. You have no clue what it is. Goes to the grave, talks to the dead in the grave. And the grave is like, um, yeah. Yeah, you know, I heard something about that, but I, was, I have no clue where it is. So he has gone underground, underwater. He has gone now into the realm of the dead. He's gone into the realm of hell looking for wisdom. He's looking for the dashboard that God uses. You remember in the, the Wizard of Oz when they finally got to the Emerald City <clears throat> and the great Oz that runs all this stuff? And he's a fraud, you know, and he, he's got this, uh, what, this control booth in there that's got all these bells and whistles. That's what Job's looking for, but he can't find it, all right? So, we've heard about it with our, with our ears. God understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place thereof. Hmm. Hmm. He's like, all right. Nobody knows. Nobody knows. It's like the, the blonde lady that sent a text to her friend and said, what does IDK know? And, and the lady sent back, I don't know. And she says, ah, nobody does. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so far, nobody knows. I mean, even the, the expert, what you think would be the expert, these guys that are guarding these mysterious spiritual places, they, they don't have a clue. And so the, Job comes to this conclusion, um, well, God does, but what, honestly, what good does that do? Where's God? All right. Now, in verses 23 through 29, we get to our third muscle group, and that is treasure at last. You're going to be... Uh, you won't be shocked because you're Christians. But Job is going to be like, oh, all right. So look at verse 23. God understandeth the way thereof, and he knoweth the place thereof. For he looketh to the ends of the earth and seeth under the whole heaven. So who has, we, we don't have the coordinates of wisdom. Anybody got the GPS numbers? You got it on Google Map? Check it out. Let's do something. Okay, Google. What's the source of all wisdom? Okay, Google. What's the source of all wisdom? She ain't even going to answer me. <laughs> she has no clue uh, so now we're uh, we're to verse number 25 now here's what God does he makes the weight for the winds God sets air pressure air speed the direction of the winds when the wind blows when it doesn't blow what's in the wind sometimes it's cold like it is right now. We've got this polar vortex thing going. And uh, I heard that there was a guy, one of the politicians in Washington, had his hands in his own pocket this week. That's how cold it's been in Washington. <laughs> so to make the weight for the winds, he weigheth the waters by measure. Remember last week? There's, there's 
more water in the clouds than there is on, on the ground, but it, and you can put your hand right through a cloud, but it holds water. What? How can that be? It's not solid, but it holds water. And the, they're, they're like these magic erasers that just continually circle around the earth, and they scrub, and they clean, and, and when, you, when you clean something with a magic eraser, it gets dirty, and the clouds get dirty, and you, you got one little grain of dust multiplied by 100 million in a cloud. And on each grain of dust, a little drop of water forms around it because of the temperature change. And at a certain time, you talk about a delivery system. Has, have you ever seen it rain on this side of the road, not on that side of the road? I've seen it pour down at Walmart and the time I get home as dry as baby powder. God knows exactly where to ship this Amazon got nothing on God. He knows exactly. This is prime delivery, what, what the Lord does. And um, he, he makes it rain on the just and the unjust. And so God knows how to do that. And here's Job's question. How do you do that? Verse number 26. When he made a decree for the rain and a way for the lightning of the thunder, God plans the course of the light. You ever seen lightning strike? Don't you? I think lightning would move faster if it didn't zigzag. You know what I'm saying? It just, but for some reason, the Lord has, you know, he's, he's designed the pattern of lightning. And he's, he's designed the sound of thunder. And you can tell how far lightning is by listening and, and y'all heard this probably all your life watch the lightning and then count 1001 1, 1, and it'll tell you how far the, uh, the the storm is away and from what i understand lightning burns a hole in the air and then when the when the atmosphere comes back together to fill up that hole that's thunder and so when you have lightning normally you have thunder god did that and job was like how do you do that if I, can find, if I can just find the, the control booth, I can find out, oh, 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 there's Job's file. Okay, let me go through Job's file. Ah, this is why. That's what he's looking for, and he ain't been able to find it yet. Now, yes, sir. They say lightning doesn't strike the same place twice. Well, usually it don't have to. You know what I'm saying? Uh, once is normally enough. And so the Lord has to repeat that. Now, so now we're about to get into something pretty amazing here. For about 25 chapters, God has said nothing. He's not talked to anybody. Now, we're about to hear, but... Job has, he's asked this question, and he gets back to this thing of, of the water um, and, and wondering where it was hidden and in, in, in what cave, where, where is this? Um, I did a little research today on the Marianas Trench. Marianas Trench is the largest trench on the earth. Um, it's 1,500 miles long. It's 43 miles wide, and it is 36,200 feet deep. And it is also 125 miles east of the Marianas Islands in the western Pacific. It's underwater. You get to the bottom of the Marianas Trench, and that's the deepest spot on earth. A lot of places to hide wisdom down there, but it's not there. Where is it? Verse number 27, then did he see it and declare it, he prepared it, yea, and searched it out. Now listen to verse 28, and unto the man God finally speaks. First time he's spoken to human beings in this book. And unto man he said, behold, you want to know where wisdom is, Job? 
you don't go to the Marianas Trench, don't go to the top of the Alps, don't go down into the subterranean caves, don't do that. It's the fear of the Lord. Right here. That is wisdom. And to depart from evil is understanding. So don't you know that Job kind of felt a little foolish? He's got his passport stamped, you know, with all of it. He's been all over the world. He's been underwater. He's been underground. He's been everywhere. And the Lord says, Job, 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 Job. Wisdom is loving me. Wisdom is listening to every whisper of my will for your life. Wisdom is hating evil and doing what is right. Wisdom is worshiping me. Wisdom is walking in my way. It's not an object. It's not a thing. It's not like gold. It's not like silver. It's not like the sapphires. It's nothing that you can go buy. It's not, it's not an inventory of stuff. It is a relationship with me. That's wisdom. That's where it is. You don't go to school to get this. You go to the throne of God to get this. And so does, does Job finally get his question answered about where is wisdom? He sure does. And the Lord did it in one sentence. He says it's knowing me. Folks, wisdom is knowing God, fearing him, and not the fear that paralyzes, but the fear that energizes. And if you fear God, you don't need to fear anybody else. That's wisdom. And I'm sure Job just had this uh, look on his face. I was looking for some stuff at the house the other day. And I just panic when I can't find something that, that I need. I'm everywhere. I'm out in the car. I'm in the bathroom. I'm here. I'm, I'm, I'm all over the place. And I go in the bathroom, I'm just aggravated. Yeah, I'm aggravated. And I look down at the sink, and I'm like, Really? I had looked in that same spot, in that exact spot. I don't know how many times. I had looked at it. And somehow, Stacy came home from work, slipped into the house, and put that right there. Right? Either that or I missed it the first time. So, yeah, exactly, exactly right. Well, we laugh about that, but don't we do the same thing? You know, people want to know, they want to know the, the secret to success in life, the secret to prosper, all this kind of stuff. Uh, what we need is wisdom. And wisdom is not intelligence. It's a right relationship with the creator of the world. Lord, thank you for the day. Thank you for your goodness. Lord, what a privilege it is to know you. And I don't ever want to stop. I want to dig into the shaft of your wisdom for the rest of my life. It's good to have things and stuff and to be able to be successful and prosperous. But the greatest thing in the world is to know you. That's the greatest wisdom. That's the structure of the universe. Knowledge of you is the structure morally, philosophically, mathematically, everything spiritually was wound up in the Ancient of Days. Thank you for your goodness to us. And bless us now as we, as we go eat and enjoy time and, and uh, this food. I pray, Father, that you grant us strength with this time. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Thank you all for being here. Let's go eat.